Today we're talking six more players that your idiot league mates are overlooking in fantasy football drafts this year that you cannot. It'll be detrimental to your health, your social well-being, and most of all, your wallet. Can't afford it in this economy. Can't afford to not watch part one of this video in this economy as well. Released on Tuesday. Go check that out. Link will be down below. Last year, this list had dudes like Chris Olave, Christian Kirk, Nick Chubb. So we're trying to nail dudes that are perennially overlooked, but end up being key pieces of your fantasy team that you could build on. Maybe they're not all league winners, but a lot of them are way safer than anticipated. A lot of them are better from a ceiling standpoint than anticipated. And we're going to talk about all of them today. Y'all know we got to tuck the shirt in. Flex a trap. Ace. <laughs> Real quick, we have been getting a lot of questions about uh, a draft guide coming out this year. We put a mini draft guide together for you guys. We are in the middle of some changes within the business, bringing on someone who's very tech-heavy, tech-focused, but they're not on the roster yet, so we weren't able to put together a really comprehensive draft guide for you, but we did a mini draft guide, and it looks like this. Here are the table of contents. We've got our rankings for one quarterback, for super flex, positional rankings, obviously, must draft list, the all fade list, positionally strategies if you are picking from one through six, strategy if you were picking seven through ten, our late round target targets after pick 100 it's about 18 20 25 pages long or so there are two ways to get it the cheapest and the best way for y'all is to go to underdog fantasy and use promo code bdge when you deposit ten dollars or more first of all you're going to get this absolutely free but they're also going to double whatever you put down on your account on underdog to play best ball with us to do some pickums throughout the season over unders things like that so if you put down 10 You'll have 20 on your account to play with, and you'll get this bad boy for free. They'll email it out to you via PDF version, which you can print out and use in your drafts. Now, I know a lot of you guys are saying, hey, I already signed up for Underdog using your code. Guess what? We're going to retroactively email this out to anybody that has used the code up to this point as well. We would never do you dirty like that. And secondly, if you live in a state that does not allow Underdog right now, then this will be available on our site, bdge.shop. That will be linked down below. So those are two ways to get it. Let's jump into the players. I mentioned that, you know, the guys on this list might not necessarily have a ceiling, but here's the first player that people are overlooking, and it's Cooper Cup, dude. Now, obviously, no one forgot who Cooper Cup is, but the fact that he I haven't even heard him in conversations to be the wide receiver, too. A lot of drafts this year are Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Christian McCaffrey. Then maybe you start thinking about Cooper Cup or Tyree Kill or Bijan Robinson, things like that. I honestly... He should probably be in the conversation for number one overall pick. But number two, him not being in there is disrespectful. Over the last two years, 92% of his games were 15 or more PPR fantasy points. 92%. The next highest rate on this list is Justin Jefferson at 68%. Underneath him, Tyree Kill at 55%. Shout out to the Caps Off podcast for the statistics. If you guys are TikTok watchers, we got Caps Off coming in on Friday. We're going to be doing some ball trivia with them. If you guys didn't know, we have a whole NFL trivia YouTube channel as well. It's a lot more fun, relaxed, hang by the couch, play some grid games, etc. We'll link that down below. But the dude puts up 15 or more PPR points every single time he's on the field. Last year, he had over 200 points in the eight games that he played. That is over 25 PPR fantasy points per game. I, I think people might have forgotten how good he was before the injury. And speaking of the injury, we have a Harvard medical surgeon who does fantasy analysis for us on Twitter. Rams Cooper Cup, wide receivers return off of tightrope surgery at full strength, adding Cup's comments suggesting low severity here, and it further strengthens confidence. Elite wide receiver injury rate doesn't rise at age 30, and his only major history is an ACL. Low overall concern here. You heard it from him, not from me, even though you should just trust me and understand that Cup needs to be in the conversation for the best player in all fantasy football. And the thing I love the most about this situation is their defense, okay? It's the perfect defensive situation for Cooper Cup to explode once again. Last year, according to PFF, they had the single best run graded defense, but their coverage ranked 21st and their pass rush ranked 25th. And you think Jalen Ramsey leaving the team is going to help that? This is a complete pass funnel defense, which is going to mean turnovers, good field position, but high scoring, a lot of passing back and forth. I feel like the Rams are going to be this year's Detroit Lions. Remember last year, Detroit was a top five scoring offense because they kept having to put up like 40 points a game. That's what the Rams are going to be this year because their defense is a no-no. So Cooper Cup, wherever he's getting drafted, start drafting him higher. Number two guy up on this list, Elijah Moore of the Cleveland Browns. Had a tumultuous, rocky career up to this point. 
moved to Cleveland this offseason via a trade for a fresh start. But I want to highlight like the last six games of his rookie year because they showed us the glimpse of who we thought he was as a prospect. Over the last six games of his rookie year as a Jet, eight and a half targets, 5.7 receptions, 76.5 receiving yards per game, and scored five touchdowns in six games. That's like 15 half PPR points per game, a huge number. He was a great route runner coming out of college, coming into the NFL from SEC. You look at his percentiles as a college player versus man versus zone per, versus press, very high rated percentile. Even last year, his success rate versus coverage in a bad year, 74th against man, 78th against press. These numbers are from Matt Harmon's Reception Perception, a great resource that I highly suggest any of y'all go cop. We will link that down below as well. His career went down in flames very quickly in New York, but he gets to refresh it now that he's over in Cleveland with Deshaun Watson, who I think will have a much better year this year, obviously, than last year. Can't go any worse. And something I think someone someone in the office, might have been J-Mo, comped him to like Elijah Moore could play the Wolf Fuller type role. And I know they're a little bit of different players, but they're, they're kind of similar. They're both like very explosive, very good downfield playmakers. Uh, Elijah Moore is a little bit more undersized, and I think he's definitely more like possession-ish type used over the middle. But I think we have a precedent of the type of receiver being used by Deshaun Watson before. He's probably going a bit high for me in best ball drafts that you do on underdog right now, but I think Moore is a dude who in like regular leagues with your friends, family, whatever, is like a 10th, 11th, 12th round pick that I'd be super happy to stack my bench with. Let's just keep moving down the wide receiver bandwagon here. Michael Gallup is the next guy that you can get super fucking late in, in drafts. Last year, he predictably lost most of the year to an ACL tear. Uh, he was not even ready for the start of the season. Obviously, he was going to be less than 100% playing throughout the season. But just a couple of years ago, he was a an 1,100-yard receiver. The Cowboys gave him a fat bag, a fat extension, and they did that while he had the ACL tear. So they clearly believe in him to come back majorly. Do I love Gallup as a player? Not necessarily. He's not ne He's not really a high ceiling player for me, but I do think that this Dallas Cowboys offense, everything they've said this offseason was about how they want to run the ball more. They get rid of Kellen Moore. Mike McCarthy's like, we want to run, 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 so our defense stays fresh. Every action that they've actually came through with has been the opposite. Signing Brandon Cooks, not taking another actual power back to compliment Tony Pollard. Feels like it might be another high pace, high pass rate offense and I don't hate Michael Gallup or Brandon Cooks but Michael Gallup's going like six rounds after Brandon Cooks so everyone's going to forget about Michael Gallup because he had the ACL tear and he's coming off a down year but again two years removed from the ACL we love it moving to the next team with a couple wide receivers that I like Rondell Moore over in Arizona okay let's just talk about Arizona as a as a whole like this is not an offense that you want to invest any real fantasy draft capital in like Hollywood, James Conner, even if Kyler plays like 80% of the season this year, what makes him so great for fantasy is the fact that he is really fast and explosive. If he's playing half the year, 75, 80% of the year, it's probably because he's not at 100%, and that's going to hurt him on the field. Arizona's not looking. They have the, the projected number one and two overall picks next year. They're not trying to win games, and Kyler obviously gives them the best chance to win games. I don't think he's going to play much this year. He had the ACL tear in week 14. That's so late in the season. Okay, so I don't want to invest any real capital into this Arizona offense. Definitely not in the single-digit rounds of fantasy drafts. Uh, when I look at Rondell Moore, he was crazy athlete. I was always a little bit hesitant on him because when you have like crazy athletes go to like smaller ish schools that aren't like football powerhouses, typically you just try to get the ball in his hands and let him make plays. And that skews a lot of like the volume statistics, receptions and yards and things like that. And I think a lot of that happened with Rondell Moore, but Cliff Kingsbury also like runs his offense as if he's trying to eat spaghetti with a spoon. Like he has no idea how to use the tools that are placed in front of him the correct way. So when I look at Rondell Moore, I also don't hate Greg Dortch. I feel like Greg Dortch, all he's done is produce every single time he's on the football field. I, I kind of just like every Arizona Cardinal offensive player not drafted within the first like 12 rounds of drafts. Rondell Moore, uh, Trey McBride for sure. I love the rookie Michael Wilson. I hope he gets a shot this year to get onto the field. I even like Keontae Ingram kind of as like a handcuff behind James Conner. Because this is like, this is what happens when you have a, as a team or an offense, when you're rebuilding, you have a complete lack of like, focus or direction and how the team will run and how the offense will run a lot of the time that's where like opportunities and surprises emerge right like you go into a season like oh their cornerback depth chart is terrible right they have nobody that's usually when someone who's like fourth or fifth on the depth chart who's like a rookie or second year player emerges and becomes a good player because they finally get that opportunity i could see a lot of that happening with arizona this year with the guys on the bottom of the depth chart this team's defense stinks they're bottom 10 in run defense pass coverage pass rush 
they're going to need to throw it like it's a fucking fixed game. So take some shots on this passing game late, but don't invest heavy capital into the Arizona Cardinals. And how can I do a list here without my man's George Kittle? We have just, I, I, I feel like the last nine videos I've made have been about George Kittle. But it's just, it's just been a few years since we've really seen the George Kittle that we fell in love with. I know I'm the poster child of saying, like, don't go chasing the primes of people who are already past theirs. But deep down, I just, I don't think George Kittle has passed it. And now he's going as like the wide receiver, five, six, sixth round, seventh round, who I think has as much upside as any receiver or any tight end in, uh, in the NFL. If you look at his stats with Purdy, since 2018, five players have averaged 2.25 or more yards per route run against too high coverage. George Kittle, Deshaun Jackson, Travis Kelsey, Michael Thomas, Tyree Kill, minimum 200 routes run. In the six games where Brock Purdy was the starter for this team, where he attempted at least 15 pass attempts, so realistically playing the whole game, he averaged 16.25 PPR points per game, four catches, 1.17 touchdowns per game, meaning he was scoring a touchdown, and then sometimes two touchdowns per game during these spans. That's where I think they're going to eat here. I am really in on Brock Purdy and George Kittle, this little duo here. And the ceiling is crazy. He has three of the top nine highest single game yardage totals for a tight end since 1980. Three of the top nine. 33% of the list is him. This is a tweet from Connor Allen. The 49ers with Brock Purdy from weeks 13 to 20. She's talking about eight weeks. 32.6 points per game. Second in pass EPA per play. Third in explosive pass rate. Fourth in drive success rate. Second in play success rate. The tweet's up on the screen. I got people in the locker room saying that everybody is, is rallied behind Brock Purdy. He's the guy this year, and I think that's great fucking news for George Kittle. So do not forget about him. And I actually want to end the list with Brock Purdy. Based on everything that I just said there, I think Brock Purdy's actually going to be a surprising, awesome QB2. Obviously, the injuries are like a little bit worrisome, but the vibes are good. The vibes seem to say that he will be ready by week one. So I like Brock Purdy, and I also like Ryan Tannehill a little bit now that D-Hop is added to the locker room there. They went from having a really shitty offense to a kind of exciting offense because similar to like the Bears where when you add DJ Moore, it makes everything so much better because you don't need to rely on Darnell Mooney and Chase Claypool to be the alphas or the ones. They are now just secondary pieces. So DJ Moore transforms that offense in the same way that DeAndre Hopkins transforms that offense because now Traylon Burks doesn't have to take the pressure of the CB1 and he can develop, right? And he's the weapon number two on that offense. And Chiggy's there and Derrick Henry's there. And you can't really focus on Derrick Henry anymore because Ryan Tannehill could also run the ball. So a couple of years ago, Ryan Tannehill was awesome for fantasy, and now that he's got weapons back there, they're obviously not going to be a high passing volume offense, but he was going as the you know, QB 30, 31, 32, behind some like secondary quarterbacks in underdog drafts right now. Uh, Tannehill's a dude that like he should be moving back up into the QB2 range, I think. All right, so just to recap the list, we had Tannehill and Purdy there. Basically, we'll just say that's one quarterback spot. We had Cooper Cup. We have Elijah Moore. We've got the boys out in Arizona, Rondell Moore, Greg Dortch, Trey McBride, Michael Wilson, take your fucking pick. Just nobody expensive there. We got Michael Gallup, and we got Georgie Kittle. But don't forget, we've got six more from the video that we put out on Tuesday. So if you missed that one, go watch it down below. And most importantly, we've got the draft guide up, licked up, and ready for y'all on bg.shop. If you are not an underdog fantasy player, if you're not in a state that can do it, that's the best place to go for it. But it is more expensive there. So I highly suggest you go into underdog fantasy. Link is down below. Download the app. Throw $10 or more, and they're going to double your deposit as well as email you the draft guide for free. All right. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.